Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. It's wonderful to see all of you here today. Today's white coat ceremony celebrates an important milestone in the lives of first year student pharmacists who began a new chapter in their journey to further the teaching and healing ministry of Jesus. White coats are symbolic of the professionalism that is expected of students during medicine and pharmacy school and as physicians and pharmacists in practice. This ceremony reaffirms the community support of the educational process that prepares these healthcare professionals for practice. Later in the ceremony, students will pledge their commitment to the profession and to the patients they will serve. Contributing to the care and healing of others is a privilege and an awesome responsibility. The white coat placed on each future healthcare professional is more than a familiar lab coat. It is a cloak of compassion, competence, communication, caring, curiosity, character, and community. We are going to take our scripture reading from the book of uh, Colossians, chapter 3, verse 12 and 17, uh, using the New International Version. The Bible reads, Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, you were called to peace, and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you, and richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through him. And we are going to bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, we thank you today. As we are gathered here, we count it all joy and a privilege to be called to the ministry of pharmacy. Lord Jesus, as we have begun a journey that we know we will not walk alone, but you will walk with us as you have promised in your word that you will never leave us nor forsake us. Heavenly Father, give us your wisdom as we learn throughout our lives. Give us the capacity to show compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience to one another and to our patients. Let us see their problems as you would see them. Guide us and use us for your glory, Lord. You are the great physician full of love and compassion. I thank you, Lord, for our faculty. May you grant them the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding as they guide us through at our schooling and beyond. Father, I thank you as I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
<clears throat> well, welcome everybody to this uh, really important moment in your uh, entrance into the profession of pharmacy. As your dean, I have to tell you that as I look out among you, I'm very proud. <laughs> I have a, a very happy heart uh, looking at your faces, and even though I can't see your smiles, I can see the smiles in your eyes uh, from behind the masks, because I know you feel this moment of excitement as well. There's just something about uh, this ceremony that we have in the health professions of accepting the white coat. You know, I, I selected the scripture for today's uh, homily because uh, I thought about the act of putting on the white coat, putting on the white coat. As you get further and further along in your profession, you may not think much about that each and every day when you reach behind the desk or off of the coat rack and you grab your white coat and you put on your white coat. It'll happen automatically. It'll become a part of habit. But hopefully with some of the remarks I'm going to give you today, I hope that every single time you put on your white coat, you'll do it with intentionality. The scripture that was read said, uh, at the beginning of the scripture says that we are to put on certain behaviors, put on certain behaviors. In other words, we are to intentionally act, intentionally act out of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience. That's a hard one. Hoo hoo, patience. Acceptance of one another. Forgiveness of one another. Love for one another. Gratitude for one another. <clears throat> This is part of what we're supposed to be. And I would tell you that I believe that this is, in fact, the foundation of the profession of pharmacy. So while these are principles that are rooted in the Christian Bible, they're also principles of the code of ethics of the profession of pharmacy. Nearly every one of those concepts that we find in Colossians are found in the code of ethics of the profession of pharmacy. Every one of them. It's no, it's no accident, in my opinion, <laughs> that those are there. I interact frequently with patients in the Inland Empire and with uh, pharmacists who are preceptors for our program and several other programs. And they tell me regularly, Loma Linda students are different. We sense a compassion in students from Loma Linda that we don't always sense in other students. We sense in your graduates a level of caring, a level of love and deep concern for patients that we don't always sense in graduates from other places. We believe that it is equally important to your academic knowledge that you're learning about pharmacy and the pharmacology. We want you to be a competent pharmacist, but if all we give you is competence in pharmacy, we have failed you. We believe that it's equally important that you learn to care deeply, to love people. You say, well, how can you love every person? Well, it comes from your heart. You have to decide with intentionality that you're going to love every person. In the political environment we're in today where things are contentious and it seems like people argue on all sides and that hatred abounds and that people would rather yell at each other than speak with kindness, it pierces through 
that darkness when someone decides that they're going to be kind and that they're going to care and that they're going to love. And we have a world that is in deep need of all of those things. I owned a pharmacy in Alabama for several years and I can remember distinctly one day a lady came in to the pharmacy and she was a uh, patient of mine that had been there for quite some time. I knew her very, very well. She had several routine medications and I enjoyed visiting with my patients. I really enjoyed them. Uh, truly enjoyed spending time with them. And I could tell just from the expressions on her face and the conversation that we were having that something was not right, that she was not feeling well. But she was not stating that. She was not telling me that. But I could sense it because I'd gotten to know her and I, I knew that something was amiss, something was just not right. And so I began asking questions. And as I asked more questions, <clears throat> I discovered that there were some underlying medical issues going on. And she was getting a fragmented care from lots of different places. And long story short, I ended up referring her as a community pharmacist to a nephrologist in a nearby town to be evaluated. When she went to the nephrologist to be evaluated, it turns out that one of her kidneys had stopped working entirely. She had one functioning kidney, the other kidney had infarcted and wasn't working. She had surgery to remove that kidney. Um, had she not had that surgery, she would have died. Three weeks ago, she celebrated her 95th birthday. Now, I didn't save her life. God did. Okay? But what I did do in a moment was listen and have a heart and care for my patients. And this is not a story about me, but it's a story about pharmacists. Pharmacists do this day in and day out. And we are in a world now uh, where it is, there are a lot of pressures on community pharmacists. Some of you work in local chain pharmacies and, and it's busy. And the pressures are immense. And there's quotas and so forth. But at our core, we have to remember that we were called first to be pharmacists and that we cannot lose that sense of calling to care for our patients that are in front of us. There's no metric that's more important than your patients. There's no quota that's more important than your patients. Never, ever, ever allow anyone to dictate to you the care, the level of care that you provide to the people that you were called to serve. Because when you do that, you have compromised the core of your ethics. And you can't do that. And there'll be competing priorities. There'll be times when you feel that you have to do things because you need the money to do it. And you have to stand on principle. And that's not easy to do. So you will pray. <laughs> and you will ask for help and strength to do that. But you will do it, I know, and, and it will make a difference. Perhaps one of the most profound stories of compassion that I've ever seen, and one of the things that crystallized in my mind the need of a hurting world for a caring pharmacist. I had uh, um, taken a position with a university, and my, my practice position was with the county health department working in a safety net clinic in Birmingham, Alabama. I was located in a clinic that was in one of the poorest parts of town. Um, every single patient that we served lived in poverty. And 
I was full at that early point in my career, full of great ideas about all of the things that I needed to do for pharmacy because I had these priorities and I needed to prove myself and I needed for the physicians to accept that I was the pharmacy expert, that I was the medication expert on the team and I wanted to prove myself because this clinic had never had a pharmacist in the clinic before. So I felt I had so much to prove until one day I went in to interview a patient before the physician was coming into the room. I went in to interview the patient. And after I finished talking to the patient, I said to the patient, is there anything else that you would like to tell me or is there anything that I can do for you today? Very proud of all the discussion I'd had up to that point. And with a bit of sadness in her eye, she looked me straight in the eye and said, yes, there is one thing that you could do. Do you have 10 cents that you could give me because I don't have enough money to pay the bus fare to get back home? Think about that. Think about that. I had in my mind that the priority of my time with this lady was to make sure she was taking her medicines like they were prescribed and to make sure that her disease state was controlled. That was what I had in my mind. But she needed something else. She had a need that was more fundamental, more basic than I had even contemplated. And it was that moment that I realized that caring for patients is not about me. It isn't about the medicines and it isn't about my priorities. It's about the patient. What do they need? What is it that what is it that's going to make a difference in her life? If she can't afford the bus fare to get home, how are we ever going to expect her to take her antihypertensive medication? It won't happen. So fundamentally, this is the profession. This is the profession that you have chosen. This is the calling that you have accepted. It is something much bigger than you. It's huge. It's an entire profession to whom you're responsible and an entire society that you've been called, in my opinion, to help heal emotionally, spiritually, and physically. And that's a huge responsibility. So over the next four years, okay, 3.75 now that you've finished block A, okay. <laughs> In the next 3.75 years, there are going to be days that are so hard that you're going to want to quit. There are going to be days that are going to be so difficult that you're going to say, oh my gosh, did I make the right decision? There's going to be so much negativity around you in society that you're going to wonder, what is it all about? But I want you to remember every time you take that coat off of the rack and you put on your white coat, the words of Colossians 3, put on compassion, humility, care, understanding, forgiveness and love because that is the reason that you're doing what you're doing I'm so proud of you God has called you to this I am so excited about what your future holds thank you for making a commitment to be the next generation of compassionate patient care providers in pharmacy thank you
Marina Abdelmesse. Timothy Afable. Hadil Al Faiz. Roya Alami Siraj. Nicole by Siegel. Yulia Velikova. Esra Ben Kadra. Paul Bichet. Thank you. Manuel Bravo Rangel. Keith Chan. <laughs> Katarina Colada. Thank you. Melody Cruz. Richmond Custodio. Chasing Sing Dai. Anthony Dang. Saidish Din. Morel El Mali. <laughs> Sammy Asa. From the class of 2023, Sarah Graham. <laughs> Clarissa Garcia. V. 
Vicky Gonzalez Alfaro. Divine Grewal. Miriam Habib. Elizabeth Hahn. Christina Hall. Rita Hanna Alcas. Thank you. Abbas Hassan. Peter Haydaw. Monica Haybeish. Sunny Sa Un Ho Douglas Johnson Grace Kang. <laughs> Evelyn Cater. <laughs> Hazel Kim. Leanna Kim. <laughs> Esther Miso Kim. <laughs> Shant Krikorian. Joshua Lara. <laughs> Angela Lay. Edward Lee. I'd like to ask Dr. Jacobson to come in to jacket our remaining class members. Avjat Man.
Mona Lisa Mavru. Annabelle Moravian. Jason Nguyen. Matthew Nguyen. Nagme Maradebris. Thank you. Michelle Nguyen. Murphy Nguyen. Areola Onewe. Jehi Park. Sarah Park. Adina Radan. Lynn Lay. James Reynolds. Jermaine Rica Blanca. Raylene Rodriguez. Sasha Rodriguez. Christian Rodriguez. Samantha Rafael. Rafael Shaya.
Lena So. David Soda. <laughs> Maria Sue. from the class of 2023, Courtney Sullivan. <laughs> Matthew Sutton III. Kaylin Tatsuyama. <laughs> Teresa Tran. Lorencia Europe. <laughs> Lynette Valencia. Emily Vang. <laughs> Gabriel Viteri. Kia Yu. <laughs> Sama Yusuf. Loma Linda University School of Pharmacy, class of 2024. We shall now recite the class pledge together. We, the students of Loma Linda University School of Pharmacy, class of 2024, promise to uphold the values of integrity, compassion, and wholeness to our patients and community. We pledge to maintain our integrity by maintaining a strong moral character, striving for excellence in all our academic endeavors, providing the best care for our patients to reach their optimal health goals. We pledge to maintain compassion by understanding our patients and putting their needs before ours learning from our experience in order to create a better future for our patients. 
collaborating with other healthcare professionals to bridge the gaps between healthcare services and underserved communities. We pledge to maintain wholeness by being an instrument of God by his grace to make man whole, being accountable to God and one another by showing professionalism in all that we do, humbly serving our patients and community regardless of race, social standing, or beliefs. We promise to uphold these values as a lifelong oath to our profession. As we commit ourselves to these responsibilities, we will continue to redefine our field and advance the pharmacy profession beyond the traditional pharmacist role. You may now be seated. Let's bow our heads for our dedication prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, today we dedicate these students to you to lead them and shape their path as they are educated to serve you in the career of pharmacy. Please fill their hearts with compassion that will guide their interactions with others. Give them patience through difficult times and an attitude of gratitude for all that you are doing in their lives. Cloak them with humility, giving you the glory for the good things that they accomplish. Give them wisdom as they address the needs of their patients and perseverance through the coming years as they are educated in the healing, teaching ministry of Jesus Christ. May we do all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hello, I'm Susan Bonilla, the CEO of the California Pharmacists Association. First of all, I would like to thank Dean Hogue, distinguished guests, family members, and student pharmacists for this invitation to bring a greeting to you from the California Pharmacists Association. First of all, congratulations to our future pharmacists. You have picked this profession at a very critical time in history. All eyes are upon healthcare and healthcare providers right now. I congratulate you on this choice to put on this white coat. And I hope the coat to you symbolizes that you have the power to be the voice for your patients. In this time of crisis now more than ever, the role of the healthcare provider is critical to optimizing good health outcomes for all Californians. And your white coat is a very important symbol of the voice you are for the patients in your care. I want to assure you that the California Pharmacists Association is here to serve you. We are here to advocate for you and to advocate for the profession. We want to make sure that pharmacists in California are able to perform at the very highest end of their license. We also think it's incredibly important for pharmacists' voice to be heard in this important time uh, in our history in California. At CPHA, we strive to optimize health outcomes for all Californians as one profession and with one voice. Thank you for being the heart of the future of pharmacy. Again, congratulations, Loma Linda, future pharmacists. Hello, I am Dr. Lorianne Demartini, CEO of the California Society of Health System Pharmacists, and I'm honored to share with you my congratulations and wishes for much success on this important day in your life. It has been several decades that I was like you, starting pharmacy school, and I can tell you it was the best decision I ever made. As pharmacists, we are one of the most respected professions we serve the greater good of humanity. The measurement of our success is not defined by increasing profit margins or production of widgets. It's measured by enhancing the quality of our fellow brothers and sisters' lives. It doesn't get much better than that. And it's a profession I desired to be a part of when I was 16. And even today, I am thrilled and proud to call myself a pharmacist. 
Today is about you and the first step in your transformation into a healthcare professional. When you don that white coat, you no longer are the person most people know you as. People will place a trust in you that at times is going to be unsettling. They will expect you to help them and they will tell you things about themselves that they wouldn't tell their family or friends. The relationship between a healthcare providers and their patients is sacred. It will require you to be at times brave, strong, resilient, and know that always the needs of your patients come first. And to be the best patient advocate is realizing your patients won't care what you know until they know you care. Each time you wear your white coat, know that you carry the mantle and honor of all those that came before you and all that will follow you. Please know that my, my, myself and the California Society of Health System Pharmacists and our thousands of members are here to support your educational journey and we look forward to celebrating with you upon your graduation. Congratulations.